so you can see here on the drawing, here's my seam. It's 13 and a half inches wide, so that's the maximum width of the piece that I need, which is good. Um, and it is 36 inches long. Okay, now I've got my two sections cut out for a bow and stern. But, if you remember the tip that I mentioned the other day, I'm only going to do one of them, and then I'm going to flip it over uh, to make the second one. Because making the spline points uh, actually takes quite a bit of time, when I'd rather just trace and cut. This piece here only needs to be 36. It's currently 48. You can see here that it's got a bad edge there. Uh, it's got a little bit of a gap there, and it's got this little chink right there. So I can afford to make a nice, new, smooth edge. I recommend working on carpet if you can, because it gives you a nice, solid surface, and yet allows your blade to penetrate into the carpet a little bit. Now here, I'm lining up my grain, because I want to, of course, keep my, all my references the same. One thing I wish I could do is use this piece twice. I'll need the full width of my piece plus half the width of my piece in order to nest two pieces together. I'm actually going to offset this such that I can cut my bow and my stern out of this one piece. This spline is going to enter right here, so I'm going to waste just a little bit, as little as possible. We're going to line that up like that. Then I'll be able to turn this piece around and cut the opposing piece like this. But this piece here, this uh, spline line coming off of here, did not mate up with this mark. That's because there was no support in this region. So I, didn't I shouldn't have traced that, but I did anyway to show you why you don't want to do that. So we'll lay this here and we'll mark off all of our longitudinal directions first. One inch. Our next one is at 9, 18, and 23. 9, 18, and 23. And of course the final one is at 36 which is where the uh, tip of the boat is. So we'll come out here to 36. I'm going to go ahead here and draw horizontal lines all the way across my boat. Because these will uh, save me time later, I won't have to redraw them. This is where my bulkheads are going to be, uh, in the bow and the stern section. So I'm going to use those to line those up. At the 23 mark is 1.13. I'll butt this together, make sure that this is accurate this time, and I will insert all my needles for my splines. The needle's back in here, because that's where it has to start. Now. This section here has to uh, be traced at this point. So I really am going to also need a support over here. I'll do that in a minute. Actually, no, let's do that now. That'll help hold this whole thing down. Because if I only put in one point, this whole piece could pivot while I'm trying to do this. Two will hold it steady. Reuse the same nail holes up here. I didn't just use a plain circular arc for this boat. I wanted something a little bit more refined uh, so that I had a finer entry angle at the bow and a finer exit angle at the stern. So I used, uh, used an actual spline in SolidWorks to draw this and you can see here that it has uh, compound curves. I can't trace this spot yet because this end here is not supported. So I'll slide my spline such that it is. Hopefully you can see here I've got a really nice looking gentle curve. I'll now do this on this side and then I'll cut it. I 
don't plan on making these actually parts of the boat because you always want to have an extra set of patterns to use because these are shapes that are going to repeat several times and they've got useful dimensions that I can uh, measure later.